Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Teaching with Inquiry Live. I am so excited that you are here to join me tonight. Tonight, it's going to be a little bit different. I am finally ready to let you in on something that I have been spending almost all summer working on, and we're going to be talking about language arts and how you can fit it all in, even though you might not have any, say, units for language because we're not really given any prescribed units when we're teaching language arts similar to we have with math and say science and social studies. So what the heck are we supposed to do with language? There is so much to get through. There's a lot to squeeze in in 100 minutes if that's what you have even more to fit in if you have less time in your schedule. So how do you fit it all in and teach a balanced literacy using a gradual release of responsibility? Literally, how do you get it all done in the small amount of time that you might have without using units? So for the last couple of years, the way I've been teaching language is to not teach in units. Essentially what it is, is it's spiraling just like we've been talking a lot about in math, but it's spir spiraling through your language instruction. So that means that there's a lot of student voice and choice in what it is that they're working on all the time. And it also includes your shared, your guided, your modeled, independent reading and writing activities all throughout the week, including some spelling and grammar. So it really takes everything and puts it together. So I know that I've had my language schedule up for a while and what that looks like. It's been on my blog for a couple of years, but then how do you pull in all of those things together to actually get language covered? So thanks very much for joining me. If you are new to the show, my name is Patty. I am a four or five split grade teacher in Ontario, Canada. I'm also the teacher blogger behind madlylearning.com and the same name through my TPT store. So thank you so much. And hello to everyone, Kate and Allison and Ashley and Sarah. Thank you. And Leah, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate that you have all been here. So the reason I'm talking about literacy tonight is I'm actually ready to, I'm pretty sure, I'm ready to launch finally my literacy program tonight. I think I might be up a little late tonight making sure that that's all done. But more importantly, the reason it's got to be done tonight is tomorrow is the final TPT bonus sale of the summer. So this is the last time you're going to get that killer deal of 25% off until like Christmas time. So I wanted to make sure that I had language and literacy stuff ready for you to go in my store so that you can act and jump in on that bonus scale. But before you do, I did want to walk through what language looks like in my classroom. So let's start with how, many, how much time you have. So in my language block, I have 100 minutes. And in that 100 minutes, I need to cover reading and writing. And I need to cover a modeled reading, shared reading, guided, and independent reading. Maybe not all four of those on the same day, but throughout a week, I need to have all four of those. And in writing, I need to be covering grammar, spelling, mentor writing in terms of writing forms, as well as writing process. So all of that gets covered in a week. And that's a lot to get done. So how do I do it? Well, I start with my 100 minutes and that starts out with you. I start with 10 minutes of just cooling down because most of the time that happens right after, say, a nutrition break or a, or a recess. So the first 10 minutes is always independent reading. Now, I'm not tracking their independent reading. I want them to be conscious of what they're reading, but I'm not asking them uh, during this independent time to be doing a lot of tracking. This is just reading for the love of reading getting them hooked on a book, getting them to think about what it is they're reading and just that quiet, reflective time where they can just calm, refocus and read. It also gives you that time to deal with all of the drama that you could almost guarantee will happen if you're teaching in a junior grade. So you've given yourself a buffer of 10 minutes 
to be able to deal with some of that drama as it comes in while your class is doing some independent reading. So there is two purposes behind that. After that 10 minutes is over, I call my student to the gathering space, which happens to be in my classroom, my carpet. And this is where I will do reading instruction. So some of the time that is a modeled read, other times that's shared reading, or sometimes that's just discussing the books that we've been reading together. So I do try to have both a modeled reading mentor text, which I prefer to use picture books because they are short, they're sweet, and you can get a lot of different types of write, reading or writing covered with those picture books. So I do that in about 20 minutes. So it's either reading a portion of the book, talking about something we've read a previous day, or it's the other thing I'm doing in the 20 minutes is a shared reading. And in a shared reading, we're not talking about the comprehension necessarily. We are digging into that text and talking about things like author's purpose and vocabulary and adjectives and why the author used what they did and digging in specifically to the text because students can see it. So the difference between modeled reading is I'm reading to them, I'm modeling through think alouds and through questioning different comprehension strategies would relate to the book that we're reading. And then in a shared reading, I'm digging into those expectations in the Ontario curriculum. And in fact, in most curriculums, I'm digging into those topics where you are really looking at what's the author's purpose? What did they mean when they wrote that sentence? Why did they include that adjective? Why didn't they use this word? You're digging really deeply into the text and you're decomposing what it is that the author wrote. So I have a shared reading and I have a guided and have a modeled reading. Once that 20 minutes of reading time is over, students will move on to a 20 minute reading and writing workshop. So I operate in centers. Now this isn't the same centers where I'm prepping a ton of stuff. This is, they're running through the same centers. It's very student driven, not a whole heck of a lot of prep for me, other than the occasional page or question here and there, but I can get that all done at the beginning of the week. It's not a uh, constant centers where they're doing games and lots of prep work for me. But what they're doing in their centers is they are doing writer's workshop and they're doing respond to reading. They have... Uh, word work with a mentor text and editing with a writing team and they're cycling through those activities in that 20 minutes and I've scheduled them so every single day they do write. They are engaged in 20 minutes of writing every single day. I know I've talked about before but if I did have my original schedule had them where there was one day where they didn't write and I did have a mutiny. So they do get to really enjoy writing with this. So they're working on that 20 minutes. Then we stop after that 20 minutes of work because that's how long my students can sustain independent work time is 20 minutes. And we've built up to that. Then we move on to a second mini lesson with me where we are looking at writing, either at the writing process, we're looking at different writing forms, we're looking at grammar, we're looking at spelling and mechanics, and we're really taking apart the English language in that sense, or we're looking at different parts of the writing process that maybe I have developed from watching my students write. So those writing processes are not necessarily where I'm working through units. I do look at what the natural progression of students writing throughout the year. So starting with coming up with ideas and brainstorming and then looking at organizing your ideas through a variety of different graphic organizers and which graphic organizers work better for which forms of writing and then moving into drafting, editing and publishing as we move on through the year. But what happens is that you're not necessarily doing a unit on just adventure stories or a unit on just poetry, that that is weaved in throughout the learning time because I found that if I did say fables and I did a unit on fables in October and I expected students to have a great fable by the end of October, they simply just weren't ready, especially my grade four students who start off really has grade three in September and their writing is looking at just a paragraph and maybe not even a well-constructed paragraph at the beginning of grade four, but by the end of grade four, then they are ready to write more stories. So having them build on that skill over time 
really does look at the longevity of them developing their skills as a writer over a much longer time. Remember that the expectations of the curriculum are by the end of grade four. So if I'm expecting mastery of a certain writing form in October, I'm probably not going to get it. And I found that as a teacher very frustrating. So instead, I stretched out. So once we've done those writing lessons where it's more teacher directed, then we move on to more independent writing and back into those centers. Now that's what students are doing. During both, both of those centers activities is when I am working with students. So the first one I'm doing a guided reading. Now I mostly have students that might be, they're at least above a level 20. So we're working more on comprehension than we are on decoding. This is a great time if you've got really struggling readers that you can work on that decoding, but this particular for me, it's time where I'm working on specific comprehension strategies with my variety of groups of students. So they have a guided reading passage that is similar in theme to the mentor text, and we're reading through it, and we're doing three read. So the first time they're reading through to check for understanding, the second time they're reading through to figure out what the gist of the passage is, and the third time they're reading, we are digging into comprehension strategies and author's purpose all through those three reads. We're doing that in our guided reading. The second section where students are working independently, that's when I'm conferencing with students about the writing. And this is where writing becomes individualized. So students are not, I am not prescribing what students are going to be writing. Students are choosing what they're going to write. And for those that have a difficult time choosing, there is a choice board every week for students to choose. And they have a variety of different choices that they can choose from. And those choices will prompt them to write something that's thematically similar to maybe the topic that was discovered th that week. Or they have a choice to choose what they'd like to write about. In the beginning of the year, students are writing about a different draft of writing every week because their writing is a little simpler. As the year goes on, you hit about January and all of a sudden you start to have students that are writing more complex forms, which means that they need to take a little bit longer. And you move away from the weekly writing tasks and it becomes more negotiable as students need to take longer because they're writing six, seven, okay, maybe some of my students are, not all of my students. But some of them are writing a page or two of writing, and it's a much better quality than what they were writing, so they need more time. And that's all negotiable with students, and you discuss those deadlines. So finally, after the last independent work period, you have about 10 more minutes. Now, this is where I will then read my chapter books. I love reading books like Wonder and Fish in a Tree and The One and Only Ivan. Those are my absolute favorite books to be reading. And that last 10 minutes is a time right before they're ready to go. That's when I'm reading those to students. And we are connecting what we're reading long term in those books to all of the other things that we're reading in class. So I'm going to, I want to show you the different types of books. So for each week, I have a different picture book. Now you can use alternative picture books if you don't have these, um, but I find that they're great books to use. And if you don't have them, you can still use the same activities with a different book that's similar to the same theme. So I always start my year with this book, Miss Nelson is Missing. Um, that is the very first book I read. And this is the book that is suggested for my first 15 days. I also follow that up by the books of Thank You, Mr. Faulkner by Patricia Poloco. So these are some of the books that we are reading in September and October. Say Something is a book about a girl who says nothing in the face of bullies, and then she finally gets bullied herself. Um, it prompts really great discussions with students. And a very popular one, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. It's a fun one, classic. And another one that I really like for October um, is Playing War. Now, I don't shy away from difficult topics, and I really like to bring in an equity lens into the books that I'm reading. So I really try to make sure that the characters in the books are diverse. I like to make sure that the topics are deep, that they're not just surface level topics. I mean, some of them are. Miss Nelson is Missing um, is a pretty simple book, but it's the first one you read. But some of them are talking about things like refugees, 
and they're talking about racism and they're talking about um, perspectives where they really need to develop a growth mindset and bullying and talking about issues where students are they're experiencing them and these are just some of the books that I'm using for September and October other books will be the similar books that you'll see in my long-range plans um, they're the same type of books that I follow and the thematics in my long-range plans of what it is you're kind of focusing on in terms of your character education that is still a theme that runs through so November will be courage and and um, October is saying something and speaking up so these are themes that are going to be present and it really helps students to understand that there's bigger ideas and it really leads to some really great discussions for students. So I'm going to quickly see if I can share my screen here with you so that you can see an example of what one week will look like. Okay, so this is October's and it is for the book Say Something. And for this book, it'll always start with a welcome letter for me, as well as information on how to get started for each of these student activities and what each one means. It will include a it will include a home connection letter for students, as well as your teacher directed lessons. So you will look through and you'll see that there is your expectations at the top, as well as your um you'll notice that there's the read aloud and it tells you what you're focusing on how much you're reading you're connecting sometimes to quotes and different aspects of things that students can organize you're looking at the writing process and you're moving into grammar and you're spreading that read aloud over one to three days so that you can really prompt some great discussions there with your students and you'll see that there's, again, this one spreads that read aloud over three days. And then you are having lots of discussions about the themes and the meaning and the characters and the connections that students can make to that. And you're looking at organizing ideas in the writing process. There are shared reading passages included in this that are related. So for this one, it's about why we wear pink shirts in March, even though we're talking about that in October. I mean, I could have waited until October, but this is too important of a topic to wait until March. I think it's March that people wear pink shirts. I wanted to address this really quickly because I think it helps to build the community to be talking about bullying and saying something and waiting all the way till almost the year is done it was is just too late for me so sometimes I like to talk about things before they actually happen in our classroom and we have the close reading and comparing things really quickly and comparing things to that main read aloud so that is the lesson plan you have quotes of the week so that you can connect what you're reading to quotes and that's in a lot of them, not in all of them, only when it makes sense. You have mentor sentences where there is a portion of that mentor text, so a really good sentence that students are connected to. This is the basis of your grammar, so students are going to look at this sentence and this sentence is linked to what the grammar focus is for the week. So if you look at the lesson plan for this one, you're going to be identifying proper sentences and which are not. So you're going to look at the construction of a sentence. Now this one is the one that's correct. You will have report organizers. You're focusing on different forms of writing. So some weeks it will be reports, some weeks it will be fiction and stories and different types of stories. Remember you're cycling through. So you introduce different writing forms because students are going to be practicing them. And then you reintroduce them again. So if you think about it, you're going through four or five or six writing forms and then you're coming back and as they practice those writing forms and tried them out, you're giving them that next step. And it's always building on what a student has done. It's building on their experience. They've tried writing. They've comments with you about writing, about how to make that piece of writing better, then they can think about it. They can go back and slowly make those minor adjustments as they keep digging deeper and becoming better writers. As I said, they are included. Included are your shared reading excerpts um, that are original to this, as well as guided reading notes for the teachers so that you know what you can focus on. There are guided reading assessment pages so that you can notice what students are doing in the guided reading. There's also guided reading texts 
that are written at two separate levels. So for this example, it is the same article. Your shared reading is an excerpt of your guided reading and connects to bullying, which connects to that say something message. And these are both at a low reading level of a grade 2.6, as well as given to you in the grade four or five range. It all kind of depends on some of the words that we're required to use determine what the reading level is. Then you have a graphic organizer for students to keep track of. Now for literacy centers, you have the two different varieties, whether or not you want to have your students use a notebook and keep all of their work in notebooks, or if you want to use duotangs, obviously using duotangs is going to be a bit more prep because you're copying the pages, but and there's also notebooks. So you have your student activities as well as your notebook cards. So these are one page per student that you would simply just print out, and this would be four activities that they would be doing in their centers for the week in their notebooks, so they would have a response to reading, a writing conference, grammar activities and spelling activities that they would be doing throughout the week. So they would just take this page, you copy one page per week for each student, they would cut out these little tabs and that would be glued at the top of every page and, that, and then their response and work would be done underneath that. So it's a little less prep. If you wanted to have notebooks and there is a similar page to these little things, there's a similar page for each student that you would print out. And then you have your writing choice menu as well as your spelling choice menu. So you have different activities that students can choose that are, that are fun. If you have my original Ignited writing package, you'll notice that this is a little bit different and here's why. I ran it through with my last students the last time. My previous students liked it, but my last students did not. And they were very vocal about not necessarily liking some of the grammar and spelling activities that were included in that. And we came up with a different idea of things that they could do. And they much preferred this one. So I included this one instead. And this is the writing choice menu. So I went through the curriculum and looked at the different forms of writing that students need to be covering, and they have different choice. So they have a free choice of something they want to do. They also have suggestions of different forms of writing in terms of narrative, diary, biography, newspaper, research, procedural, speech, and a review. They can choose the topics here, or they can choose their own free choice to say they want to write a newspaper article about something else, then they can choose that as well. And because you have all of these different forms, these forms are cycled through in your instruction. So they may start by writing a diary and you may not have instructed them how to write a diary entry. That's okay. If they're starting a diary, they can have access to online training and tutorials, or they can just give it a shot. They can you can talk about it. One of the first activities is talking about different forms of writing. You can also eliminate certain forms of writing until you've introduced them, or you can just let you can stab at it. Maybe not do so great at it, but that gives you a great opportunity to conference and help them grow because they have that experience that they can draw from, and then they can look at the form and have something to kind of tangible that they can say, oh, Okay, well, if I did this and this and this, that's what makes it a little bit different. And then you have your assessment pages. So there's two different types of assessment pages. One is you have a checklist for each week of the month. So you have four activities a month or four weekly lessons a month, and you can go student by student and check off what they were able to show. And notice there's quite a bit of expectations that are covered each week. And you're covering a little bit of each expectation but you're doing it more frequently. So you're covering a lot and you're doing it a little at a time. Or the other option is to take a whole class where you're writing your class's name down the side and checking it off there so that you have what expectations you're covering for the month and you can look for examples of students being able to do that. In a lot of the time, you're gonna get this assessment data either through their independent work as well as through their guided reading and writing conferences. That is your goal of where you're going to get most students. You're going to get most of them buying in and you're gonna get most of your assessment data is working with them there.
So this is just an example of one week's worth of lessons. The 15, your very first thing you're going to start with is the 15 days getting started where you're going to slowly onboard students into all of these activities. By week four in September, you are going to have the students ready to start this. It's again, gradual release. They might not be completely ready to jump full into this. You know your students the best that you can decrease their independence and increase more teacher control and then slowly let go of that as you get going and get going through it. My personal my personal experience is this is what I've done for about the last five, six years in my class. And what I've noticed is students love writing. I have mostly boys in my classroom. And this was kind of why I started this. Was when I have mostly boys in my classroom, boys were absolutely resistant to writing. Primarily, I think, because they were told what they were supposed to be writing. And maybe it was being told by a female teacher. Where my preference for what I want to write is totally different from what my male students want to write. And by allowing them the freedom to say, yes, you can write a story that's set in Minecraft. Absolutely, you can write a story with the characters from Fortnite. You can recount to me the video game you played last night. Now, as a teacher, do I really necessarily want to be reading all the time about those things? No, but it's a hook. It's the thing that gets those reluctant writers to write. They write about something they love to do. And when you have students getting that freedom to write, even if it's bad, at the beginning, you're hooking them on the idea that writing is okay because you can write and when you meet with your teacher, they tell you that there's things that you do really well, that you came up with ideas or you have a really strong voice. There's a lot of boys that are reluctant writers that have a very strong voice in their writing. And this is developed when you give them that freedom and choice. And at the beginning, the idea is not for them to be writing perfectly formed adventure stories or biographies or fables. It's just to get them to write and get them to love writing and then slowly building in those other pieces and pushing them one step at a time towards being better writers. And that conference time is so important because it gets students to move from where they are now and push them one step at a time in terms of where they're going to be. And students have goals. And these goals are specific to getting students to move through becoming better writers. And they are in charge of those goals and they own them and they know what they look like in their classroom. So included, what I'm going to include, this is going to be in my TPT store before tomorrow morning. And it will have September, your first 15 days, it will have the fourth week of September, which will be a unit like the one that you have seen that I've showed you tonight. It will be all of October. There are four weeks in October for students to work on. So that's four weeks for September, four weeks for October. And then you will also have all of the supplementary materials, including the writing goals and the um, dictionary, my writing folders, writing wheel, all of my other writing complimentary materials that are in my TPT store. If you already own Ignited Writing or you own the September bundle, you will have both of these access to you. So you will have both the first 15 days of September available to you as well as October. You will have that ready already. So if you are already an owner of those two, I'm just flipping the file that's in that, changing the title. So if you've previously purchased those, you now have access to this brand new file. If you want to upgrade, I'm going to take a risk here and I'm going to put it in a growing bundle. So that means that the growing bundle, you will be able to have access not only to September and October, but you are also going to get November through June. And those will be coming out before it's time to teach those. So November will come out a month before. It'll come out in October and so on and so forth. So they will be ready for you to purchase. Now, because it's a sale, it'll be, and it's not a complete bundle, it will be discounted on about half off what the eventual full value will be. Because it's not a complete bundle, I'm doing something extra special tonight. And what I'm going to be doing is for that growing bundle, I will be offering a one-time only 
deal where you get to have access to a special secret Facebook group with me and I will teach along with you. So that means that every day I will be in that group and I will be coaching you through the first 15 days of using this program in your classroom. So that's what you get as a bonus if you choose to buy the bundle tomorrow. And I will extend it till the end of the month. So if you buy the bundle from now until August 31st, the Growing Ignited Literacy Bundle, which will include September, October, all of the supplementary materials with the promise of November to June. And you'll get that at about 50% off tomorrow, what the eventual final number will be. You will also get the special bonus of being invited to join me for the first 15 days and you will get to teach along with me. So I will be in that group. We'll be talking about what it is we're going to do. We're going to be looking at what your lesson's going to look like every day. We're going to talk about how it went, any questions you have along the way, those frustrations, because it's going to happen where you're trying to build your student's stamina, problem solving those, talking about what's going to be happening. That's all included just for bundle members. And that will be for bundle members who purchase between tomorrow because I'm not going to give you access to it today because you're not going to pay. I want you to get it for the sale price. So. And frankly, I have to post, I have to go make sure that it's all ready um, to put it up in the store because I was they surprised us with these sales. We never know when they're coming, and then they say, "Bam, there's a sale!" Uh, so surprise! So that will be up in my store. So if you own it already, you will have September and October. You will have access to those. If you would like to have the bundle, then you can have the bundle. It is it is going to be about 50% off with the sale of what it will finally, what the final retail price will be when the bundle is complete. And because it is only September and October with the packages, I'm offering a special bonus where you get me and I will be your coach for the first 15 days to get you through putting Ignited Literacy into your classroom. So that's that hope you're excited about it. I am super excited. This has been like a baby of mine for a while. I've constantly been trying to think, how do I get my literacy down for other teachers? I know that so many of you have reached out, okay, Patty, you've got science, you've got social studies, you've got math, but what do I do for language? And I'm so excited to actually have something for you ready to go. Now, this is going to be primarily for grades four and five. If you've got grade six, but they're lower, you could work it. Guided reading and shared reading passages will be lower than what you would need them to be. So you might have to supplement if you're looking grade six. And if you're in grade three, you could do it if you've got some high workers, but you have to remember the books that are going to be used are really more junior level books. They are talking about deeper subjects. So you really have to kind of know who your students are. This ideally is for students in grade four, grade five. That's where I'm at right now for that. So if you have any questions, I am ready to answer them. Just fire them into the comments and I will uh, answer them. So Melissa, you said is the bundle for grade six. It, it really would work for grade six. You do have to know your students. The only, the only caveat would be that the guided reading materials that I have included for this, which would be a passage that um, are specifically tailored here, the guided reading levels for this are written for grade, they're, be, they're in the grade four to five range. And then the modified guided reading version is in the about grade two, low grade three range. So if you know your students and you've got quite a few students that might be reading kind of at grade level, um, then it would work. Definitely the topics, but if you wanted to supplement some of the guided reading materials for your older or for your higher level students, then I would suggest that that would be the only way it would really work for grade six. Sarah, it really has been a labor of love, not just for me, but um, up, upstairs right above me right now. Um, my hubby is also working hard. So this has been a labor of love from both of us because he has definitely been helping me for this one. But I am so excited. I love 
teaching literacy this way, and I can't wait to be able to bring it to other classrooms. Could I fit this in a 60 minute period a day through social studies? Honestly, Rob, no, you can't. Um, I don't want to lead you the wrong way and say that you could. You could certainly pull a few things in here or there, um, but you wouldn't have time for it. I really, I really don't think that you would. Um, especially if you're doing science and social studies that's already jam-packed. I do fully advocate that the person who teaches science and social studies should also be teaching language, but because you need so much support in language to teach things like research skills and coming up with ideas and problem solving and explaining your answer, all of those things you can support in literacy and you can do a lot of oral language in science and social studies, but I really don't think if you've only got 60 minutes, you're gonna have you're gonna be hard pressed sometimes to because you're gonna want to talk to your students for longer than 20 minutes. So there's gonna be times where you might not even be able to fit it into the hundred minutes um, if you go over, which is totally okay because you do have a few extra days because there's only 20 instructional days in this. So if you've got more instructional days in the month of October, then you'll have that little extra leeway, which is what I've built into it. But um, I would say no, as much as I would love to say yes, I'm going to say no, it's not, you're not going to have enough time. So I hope that answers all of your questions about Ignited Literacy. If you've got any more questions, just shoot me a message on Facebook. I will be able to get back to you. Um, got my phone and I will be able to respond back to you when I can. Um, I try to make it within really quickly. If you've messaged me on Facebook lately, you realize that I'm trying to get back to you a little quickly. Um, Rob, I just see that you put that you're teaching a four or five math language and social studies in the morning. So it depends on how much time you have for language. Rob, if you've got math, you've got 60 minutes a day. And I don't know what time your day is over. If you've got some social studies time, it really depends on how long that language block is that you've been given, unless you're being told you've got to fit social studies into language, which makes it difficult. So we can talk. Send me a message, Rob, and we can, we can talk and see if it's the right program. Um, I'm not sure you might have enough time, though. Does this program require us? Does this program require us to access other reading materials? Only if you want to. The reading materials that you would have to access are the picture books. So you would have to have access to the picture books. I don't provide picture books. Um, I can't, not on TPT. And it doesn't include the novels that you may choose to read. But you can really choose to read any of the novels. So any of the trade books, no, I wouldn't have access to those. Um, you would have to have those books to go with it. Um, although you could use, so if you didn't have, say you didn't have say something, you could find a book that would have a similar theme because this one's about saying something about bullying. So I'm thinking books like Zero or um, One, The Red Crayon. There's other books that you could use and replace if you didn't have this one, but I would recommend, it would mean you'd have to do some of the reading materials. In terms of the guided reading and shared reading passages, no, those are all included. Every single week, you will have everything you need except for the read aloud book that is that the, the weekly lesson is uh, surrounded by. So unless you've got some students that are reading way ahead or way below and you really can't meet their needs, you would have to supplement based on the students that you have in your class. But for those students that are working below grade level, about a grade level, below grade level, or they're working at grade level, all of your materials that you would need for those students are going to be there. Your guided reading will be at two different levels and you'll have a shared reading um, passage as well. So those are all included. So hopefully that works. Carrie, I'm, so, I'm glad you joined. Sorry you didn't get to join right at the beginning. That's okay. As soon as I end the broadcast, it will be on my Facebook page. So you can easily just go back and rewatch from the beginning. I broke down what kind of my week looks like and also, or what my day looks like in terms of literacy, as well as I did a walk through through a typical weekly lesson as to what's included. So it's all there. And Joy, I see you've got, can you get a list of the books for the year so that we can buy them before the units? 
not today because I have to get it out. But absolutely, I can. If you look at the books that are in my long range plans, they are this. They are going to be the books that will be the basis of them. I may have changed one or two here and there, but that will be reflected in my long range plans as they get changed. Um, most of them will be reflected in the long range plans, but I absolutely will have a list of books for you. Um, these are books that I find regularly in my school library or, um, or book room. And they're ones that I think might be accessible, easily accessible. And if they're not accessible, if you can't find the book, my teacher hack is there's generally a YouTube video of somebody reading it. And when push comes to shove, it's okay to do that, to get a, to get a book. It's okay. I've done it. I've done it. If I can't find a book in time, I've totally done the YouTube video with somebody else reading and I hit pause. So most of these books are available. If you can't get access to the book, at least you can get access to that that way. Although you would have to find that video link yourself because I can't include that one because I'm pretty sure you break copyright. Actually, the materials at this moment are not exactly ready for Google Classroom, but they will be. Um, it's just a matter of me trying to make sure that I get this out for, I really wanted to make sure that these stuff, in all honesty, I wanted to make sure that these were accessible for the last sale of the summer before school started. So they are going up in the, in the print out version, but I myself use Google Classroom and I'm gonna need them to be Google Classroom ready. So it's just a matter of once they are posted, just convert those into Google Classroom and then they will be automatically updated um, on PPT for you to just re-download. So they will be accessible. And what it will be for Google Classroom, well, it will be the student pages will be individual PDFs. So what you would end up doing is you kind of app smash that where you would take PDF, if they're in Google Classroom, you would take the PDF and open it up in either Notability or Explain Everything and students could fill it out and then that would go back into Google Classroom. I know for our board, we're all iPad. Um, so we use Notability. If you've got Chromebooks, I know that there's a different system to be able to write on PDFs or write on top of PDFs. Um, we have all iPads, so I am just using Notability or Explain Everything to write on them, and then they can pop them right back into their drive, if that makes sense. Um, I believe when I surveyed my Insiders Club, people said individual PDFs of the student pages were going to be the easiest format to use. If by chance you need something a little bit different, just let me know, because we can probably figure that out. I know doing di digital tech stuff is all new. So I hope that answered your question. The sale that is on your TPT right now, is it going to be on sale tomorrow? Yes, everything is on sale tomorrow. It actually starts at midnight. I won't be ready by midnight. I can guarantee you that. Um, it will be ready tomorrow morning when you wake up. It'll be about 25% off. I don't think the sale is on the site today, but it will be tomorrow and it's about 25% off. Um, and you'll be able to buy everything all at once tomorrow. I hope that answers your question. Joy, there's an answer to your question. These are the books that you need so far. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fucker. Say something. Playing War, The Name Jar, and that gets you till the end of October. And Mrs. Nelson is missing, although those few books, you can choose whatever book you want. <clears throat> okay, so I don't see any other questions that are coming in. Feel free, I'm gonna say good night for now, and remind you that those will be in my TPT store tomorrow morning. They will be on sale and it will be, you can, if you already own them, you will have access to them. They will be yours. If you own the predictions and recounts for September and you own Ignited Literacy, you will have access to the September bundle and the September activities and the October activities. There's also going to be a growing bundle for sale where what you're going to be able to get is you'll get September, you'll get October, you'll get all of the related materials plus as an added bonus because you are buying the growing bundle, you will have access to a special secret group with me for the first 15 days of September where I am going to be your coach getting you through those first 15 days and we are going to talk every day 
about how it's going in your classroom, what you can be doing, what to expect, and we can brainstorm and troubleshoot as we need. So that is for anybody who gets the bundle between tomorrow and August 31st. So it's very limited. If you get the bundle between now and August 31st, then you will have access to that special secret group and coaching from me. So thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited that this is going to be ready. Again, as I said, it's been a labor of love. and I'm so excited to be able to bring it to you and finish off some of that missing piece that's been out of my TPT store that I know so many of you have been waiting for forever. So thank you very much for joining me tonight. If you've got any questions, drop them in and we'll be back next week to talk more about teaching with inquiry. Thanks very much for joining me. We'll see you next week. Bye.